Joining us now is Dr. Roy Flores, the Chancellor of Pima Community College. Chancellor, good to see you. Good to see you, Bill. It's been tough not only on the health care area where so many people are now going to lose their health insurance, but higher education is being hit as well, and especially adult education. Is it being eliminated, and what kind of impact is that going to have? Well, I, it, it is being eliminated. It's not in the governor's budget, and it looks like that's the budget that's going to pass. Um, at Pima Community College, we educate about 7,800 adults every year to the end of providing them with a GED or some other experiences that will get them back in the job market. And um, the college provides, excuse me, the state provides us with about $600,000 and the federal government matches that three to one and then the county's kind enough to give us a quarter million. So the, the upshot is we're not losing just the $600,000 from the state we're losing a grand total of about $3.2 million to, for, for adult education. And, and we're simply going to have to, I hope, find alternatives and get this back on track. Because these people then will, will really have no choice if they, uh, and we have such a, one of the highest high school dropout rates already in the country. So you have people that perhaps have dropped out and realize, I need a high school uh, education diploma so they won't have an opportunity to even turn to adult education. Uh, that avenue will be closed unless something dramatic happens. I'm, I'm hopeful that that perhaps the governor will find uh, a way to use the stimulus money that that she has at her discretion to provide the state match so the federal government will provide the three to one match but I don't know that there's been any talk about about that at all. Um, I, I really think that we're being a little short-sighted as a state with respect to adult education because if you, if you think of people making contributions to the economy in the 21st century who do not have a high school diploma or its equivalent or something beyond a high school, the, um, the chances are that they're going to be unemployed most of their life, which means in somehow, somehow or other that, that they will be receiving some public services for the rest of their life. And adult education is so important, as you pointed out, to over 7,000, currently over 7,000 yes. individuals are involved in this. From what I understand, if this budget is signed by the governor, we will be the only state without uh, an adult education program in the country. Right. And I think employers will look at that when they look to locate businesses. They're looking at education generally to see how how strong the education system is because when they locate, one of the key elements is how productive can we be over the long haul. And pro productivity is a large function of the, of the strength of the labor force. We have to keep our school strong, uh, K-12, and the university strong. And we have to absolutely reduce the number of high school dropouts. Just to give you an order of magnitude, there, there are... Uh, enough high school dropouts in Pima and Maricopa County to exceed the total population of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, and then in the, and, and equal to, to about the population of Minneapolis. So that's an enormous number of, of folks that are not going to be making the best contribution to our economy. We talk with uh, Preston Shelton here at the university. We've been following how the budget cuts have impacted the University of Arizona, how, how the cuts impacted Pima. Well, uh, of course, Pima runs the adult education program, so we'll have to, you know, we have employees that are associated with that. If it doesn't get funded, we're going to have to lay those folks off. But we've taken a 30% reduction in state funding over the last two, two, two and a half years, and for us that, that hurts considerably. Compounding that is the fact that because of the economy, a uh, lot of layoffs, our enrollments are up by 12%, so we have less money and people who are, have lost their jobs and are, some have lost their homes want to come to us so that we can help them get back on their feet with uh, learning a, a new trade or, or perhaps going on for a bachelor's degree after completing a course of study at Pima. And that's a, an awful situation to be in. If, if you've been laid off, you're rearing a family, if you have obligations, where can you go? Well, you turn to Pima, and I, I don't think we'll be able to to satisfy the need for all of the folks that want, that want that kind of education. How many students are we serving in Pima County at Pima? 
Well, our, our, just our credit enrollment alone is 71,000. So you can add another, depends on the non-credit side, sometimes as many as 12, 15,000 a year. We don't emphasize that as much. So really you're looking over 80,000 students a year. And Pima is becoming more and more important as the governor has said to the three state universities, Precisely. Let's, uh, let's increase the number of bachelor's degrees, let's get the community colleges involved. And you have been involved with the university. We have. And in fact, Dr. Shelton and I have met uh, many times with our respective uh, leadership teams to, to help implement the, uh, uh, the university's vision and the ABOR's directive to, to, for more collaboration with community colleges. Our collaboration, as you know, Bill, precedes that by, by a long shot. So we had a leg up. But uh, in order for us to fulfill our part, we have to have classes that are available and open and, and the support services as well. So while the universities are depending on community colleges, that assumes that we will have the resources available to offer the instruction that they otherwise would offer. And those resources from the state continue to diminish now. Uh, what is the percentage now that Pima Community College receives from state financing? Well, it's gone in the last couple of years from 16 now to about 9% of, of our operating budget, much less of our overall budget, but uh, you know, including capital and so on. But our operating expenses, it's, it's now only 9% and, going, and getting smaller. Can you foresee the day where it could almost be zeroed out? Yes, and by that, and when I mean, it does, we won't return the phone calls from Phoenix. <laughs> there be no reason to, other than the fact that they have many rules and regulations. It's going to get down to the point that they give us a dollar, and we'll have to spend a dollar twenty explaining what we've done with the dollar they've given us. I mean, what? I, give us personally what you, in the next five years, what do you see the scene look like for higher education in this state? Well. I think what we're going to have to do, those of us privileged to have a leadership position in, in higher education, is go back to the people and see if they still want the same bargain that, that, they, have, that they have struck among themselves, and that is to provide public education to the citizens of Arizona. And in order to do that, they understood when this was fashioned years, 100 years ago, that they had to provide that through state revenues, state taxes. Um, it, it appears that either the public has changed their mind and don't want public higher education, or that the elected officials don't understand that that's what the public wants. And I believe it's worth that discussion. I think we should go back and ask the, ask the general public, and, uh, do you still want community colleges? Do you still want them funded in part by the state and in part by local taxes? And if the answer is no, then we will know. We'll have to make adjustments, and I, I think the, the university would then have to make adjustments on, on how it's going to um, dispatch with its responsibilities for, for the people of Arizona in a different way. But we won't have this ambiguity and this death by a thousand cuts. And I think you're right. I think you're on to something. We're about out of time, 30 seconds, but I think you've really hit on the fundamental issue here, does the public still believe in a public education for Arizona? That's the question. What do you think? I think the answer will be a resounding yes. I think when we explain to them why we do what we do and the benefits that they receive because of the efforts of higher ed, it'll be a resounding yes. Okay, Chancellor Flores, thank you for sharing some of your thoughts with us and uh, articulating this very difficult situation for, for education in this state. Thanks. Thank you, Bill.